Last week I released a video about replacing the power supply in my Ender 5 Plus 3D printer. Now in any video I release, I usually use the pinned comment for notes, corrections, clarifications, things like that. Occasionally though, I miss something that I really think I need to do a follow-up video on, and that's what I'm doing here. Now any time you replace a power supply, you need to make sure that your 3D printer's chassis is properly grounded. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to test for proper grounding with your chassis, and then I'm going to ground this power supply to this chassis, and I'm going to show you how that's done. That's what I'm doing today right here on Crazy Fabrications. Let's go. So before I really get into this video, let me thank commenter Andrew Forte. He was the first to mention that I did not properly ground this power supply to the chassis when I added it. So big thanks to him. He's right, this is a safety concern and I really do need to address it. So with the old power supply, it was mounted inside the chassis, which meant that the screw contact and metal on metal on contact should have grounded that power supply to the chassis. But with this mod, I have plastic around the supply, mounting it to the frame, which is going to act as an insulator. So I really need to do something to take the ground of this power supply to the chassis. So first of all, let's get up close and I'll show you how to check to see if your power supply is grounded to your chassis. So here we are, I've got the power supply and the chassis in view so that you can see what I'm testing. First things first, let's make sure that the power supply is unplugged from the wall. We will not need it plugged in for this testing. Second of all, you're going to need a multimeter that preferably has a continuity setting. Now what this does is beeps when I have continuity between the two leads. So there we go, you notice it beeps saying that basically this wire, this connection is complete. And you'll see that that goes to zero. So we can use this to test between any two locations to see if there is continuity. I like to go end to end when I'm doing any of my testing. So this pin right here is going to be the ground wire that connects to your home's ground circuit. Now we can test this ground lead to anywhere else to see if there's continuity. So this green and yellow wire going to the power supply, the top one, should have continuity to there. And it does. So we know that at least from here to here, the power supply is grounded. And then we can also test, does the power supply's chassis have a ground? And yes, it does. It goes from the wall to the chassis. But are we getting continuity to the chassis? Let's test that. So right here, I have a unpainted, uncoated screw that if the chassis is grounded, should be a good test point. So again, I'm going to put either lead on this and then I'm going to touch it to this screw. Notice I'm not getting a beep, which means that this chassis is not grounded to the power supply. And just to double check myself, I can take a lead here and test it to another uncoated part of the chassis to make sure there's continuity. And notice right here, this is uncoated and I have continuity. So we need to somehow get this ground to this chassis. And there's actually a really easy solution to this problem. So as I mentioned, all we really need to do is get this ground wire on the power supply to go to the chassis to any bare metal part. And this screw is a very convenient location because of its proximity to the power supply. So I have this green spool of silicone wire. I'm using 14 gauge wire to carry this ground to the chassis. And all I need to do is cut it off so that I can run it easily. So it'd be really nice if I could run it down the back of that power supply to this screw connection that I showed you earlier. So I'm just gonna make that long enough. A little too long is better than too short. I'm then going to cut that off Okay, then I can use the 14 gauge stripper to strip off just enough wire to attach my ends. There's the first one. I'm going to 
strip off the end on the second one as well. There's the second one. That should be enough. Now I have these crimp connectors that I can use to safely connect it to the power supply and to the chassis. I just need to sit these in far enough to where I can see the wire coming out the end. Then I use that same tool to crimp that wire down. All right, we can test that, make sure we have a good connection. That doesn't come off. We can do the same thing to the other side. Again, make sure that's good. Now, as you noticed here, I am using stranded wire. You will need to use stranded wire for this. Do not use solid core wire. I will include a link to the wire that I purchased as well as a similar crimp tool that I found on Amazon that I think will be a good replacement to the one that I use. Now, mine is just an old tool that I've had forever that I bought at a local home improvement store where you can also find these. Now for the final step, let's attach this where it goes. Now for the power supply side, I'm simply going to remove the existing ground wire that's coming from my chassis. And I always feel like the best way to attach a second wire is put them back to back. So for the first one, which will be the ground that's going to the chassis, I'm gonna put it what I call face down. So it's gonna be flat on this side. And that'll fit right in there. And then I'm going to take the other wire, which was the original wire, and I'm going to place it right on top facing the other direction, facing up. And I can tighten that down. Okay? So both of those wires are nicely secured. Nothing is at too great an angle where I'm worried about... <laughs> there goes the filament. Anyway, nothing is at too great an angle where I'm worried about anything shorting or anything like that. Now for the second connection, I'm simply going to loosen this screw in the corner. And then I'm going to place this wire where I'm going to get the most metal on metal surface contact, which is going to be between the screw and the washer. I don't want to put it behind the washer because the corner bracket is actually plastic, which is not going to help us at all. So I'm going to tighten this down really well again. Now this is well secured. This can now be cable tied to the chassis for a nice clean look. Now let's back up again. We will double check our continuity, see if we fix the problem. So here we are. We have our multimeter again. We can check between the AC jack and the power supply, make sure we still have a good connection. We do. And we can also check between the AC jack and a bare metal part of the chassis. And again, right here, all of this metal is now grounded. So we once again have a safe 3D printer. And with that, I feel a lot better about the safety of this printer. Having a grounded chassis is really important because it means if there are any shorts in the printer, in the power supply, in the main board, that you're going to be protected when you grab all of this metal. Again, thanks to Andrew for being the first person to comment on this oversight. It's thanks to viewers like him that I'm able to continue to improve upon my content. And when I do miss something, I'm able to pass this information on to you. If you're looking for any of the components that I used in this video, you can always find links to them in the description. If you'd like to help support this channel, you can do so in the easiest way possible by clicking like on this video, subscribing to this channel, hitting the little bell icon if you'd like to see notifications when I post new content. If you'd like to help further, I have a Patreon account you can subscribe to just like Jacob, Witten, and Brendan have recently done, my three latest Patreon supporters. Thanks guys for your contributions. First and foremost, thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for leaving feedback. I really enjoy making these for you. Hey, I'm Chris. This has been Kersey Fabrications. Thanks for watching.